Hi, I'm Marisol, and this is Josh. We're with the School for International Expedition Training. And today we're going to talk about how to rope up for glacier travel. We'll focus on spacing between climbers, appropriate amounts of rescue rope, and how to coil the rescue rope. The first thing that we're going to consider here is the spacing on the rope team. And the spacing is basically based on how big you think the crevasses are that you're going to encounter on the glacier. The wider the crevasses, the greater the spacing should be between each climber. You also need to consider the difficulty of arresting a falling climber due to slope angle and snow conditions. The harder it is to arrest a falling climber, the more you might need to increase climber spacing or even put in running pro or anchors and use belaying techniques to keep the whole team from being pulled into a crevasse. For example, if three climbers on a rope team were tied in three or four meters apart and one person fell into a crevasse, it's likely that everyone would be pulled in. More appropriate spacing might look like this. If the cracks are two to three meters wide and conditions are favorable for self-arresting, each climber is spaced out about 12 to 15 meters. Okay, next we need to consider the rescue rope. The rescue rope is essentially the rope that's left over after we've tied into each other. The key thing to remember here is that you need a sufficient amount of rescue rope to reach the fallen climber and haul them out. With two climbers on a 60 meter rope, you can space each climber about 12 meters apart. That will give you about 24 meters of rescue rope for each climber to put into coils. You can then put in friction knots, typically butterfly knots, in the rope between each climber to increase the friction at the lip of the crevasse. On a glacier with only two climbers on a rope can be very dangerous. If one person falls into a crevasse, the other person needs to simultaneously hold the fall and build an anchor and then perform all the rescue work alone. Even highly experienced climbers and guides struggle with these complex rescue skills. With three people on a 60 meter rope, what you'll do is space out each climber about 15 meters. And then that leaves you with about 30 meters to give to the person at the end of the rope or to the person who is less likely to fall into the crevasse. So the best way to divide up the rope for three people is to find the middle of the rope. You can tie in one person there or clip them in. And then the other end of the rope, you will have someone else tie in there. And then in between those two people, you'll basically find the middle of the rope and have someone clip in there. Then the rest of the rope is your rescue rope. With four climbers on a 60 meter rope, you can tie in climbers 12 meters apart from each other, which leaves you 24 meters of rescue rope. Next, let's address two different options for coiling the extra rescue rope. We can either kiwi coil the rope or butterfly coil and put the coil in a backpack. First, we'll butterfly coil the rope, stuff it in the pack, and then tie or clip into the rope. The butterfly coil is awesome because it's simple, it keeps the rope off the back of the neck. Okay, another great way to coil up the rescue rope is with a kiwi coil. And the kiwi coils are great for fast transitions from walking on the glacier to moving into fifth class climbing or vice versa. Once you're tied into the rope with the figure eight follow through, you're going to take the rope up and over your right shoulder. Then you'll make an upside down shelf with the opposite hand. The rope goes over the right shoulder, behind the head, under the shelf. And then you repeat this process over and over. Okay, next, you'll pass a bite through the belay loop. You'll send your left hand under all of the coils and strands of the rope. Grab the bite and pull that bite over the coils. 
with the bite, tie an overhand knot around the running strand of the rope. Clip the bite to the belay loop with a locker. Add another overhand on a bite on the running strand of the rope.